In the last episode of Soap, Billy made a vow to make it to Malaguay and rescue his mother. And when he made good on his promise, El Puerco made Billy a general. Then he made a promise to Gwen that he would make sure no one tried to kill her. And she, in turn, made him a promise to stop making it with men for money. By making a lot of baskets, Jody made the carny tell him that Carol had made tracks to Albuquerque with a fire eater, which didn't make Jody too happy. And Bert and Danny made a deal to sell Chester and Dutch their construction company. But Bert's not too sure whether or not he made the right decision. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells. And this is so bad. I absolutely refuse to live under the same roof with a man known as El Porco. <laughs> hey, big guy, that's El Puerco, not El Porco. It means pig. It's Spanish. <clears throat> Puerco is pig in Spanish. This guy is Spanish, so they don't call him the pig. They call him El Puerco. If he was from France, they'd call him Le Porc. In Italy, he'd just be plain old Porco. <laughs> Jewish is Hasser. Russian is Svenja, Greek is Guruni, and German is Schwein. <laughs> Daddy, I'm surprised at you. Why? <laughs> because you should be happy that Mother and Billy are coming home safe and sound. I know, I should be. And yet... <laughs> hey, Eunice is right, honey. So let's all just try to get along together. Right, Eunice? Oh, stop it, Miss Congeniality. <laughs> you! Oh, Mother! Oh, my God! Jessica! Billy! Family! Oh, God! <laughs> Jessica was so worried about you, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to do. Hello, Chester. <laughs> and you, how... Dare you kidnap a man's wife, take her off to a jungle somewhere with bullets flying everywhere, throw her into a rowboat in the middle of the ocean with no food, no hot water. I have half a mind to call you a very dirty name. <laughs> Look who's talking. Have you not maligned this lady, huh? Mujeriego. What did you call me? Hot trousers. <laughs> It's a good thing I don't know Spanish. First of all, she has told me all about your fooling around, and frankly, I want to vomitar, comprende? Oh, is that so? Yes, you flirt all over the place, don't you? In your mohair sweaters and your hair like Ben Cartwright? <laughs> so don't talk to me about mistreating your wife. And by the way, she is no longer your wife. That's right, she is not yours to treat like a concubina. She is my girlfriend. <laughs> and if you ever touch her again, I will kill you. <laughs> and say hello to Jess. Welcome back, Mrs. Tate. Thank you, dear. <laughs> we really missed you. Well, that's because I wasn't here, Anne. <laughs> Come on, Elle, make yourself right at home. Ah. Oh, uh, Billy. Oh, hi, Dad. Uh, Billy. I want you to know how proud I am of you. Putting your mother's welfare and security before yourself. Here's a dollar. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. But I have no need for money anymore. Really? How odd. Give it back. <laughs> I found something more important than money. Something I can hold on to through all of my life. Courage, bravery, honor. Power. <laughs> I have make him a general. I'm going upstairs to my quarters and plan our counterattack on Malaguay. Call me in time for chips. Billy, I absolutely...
absolutely forbid you to attack a third world nation. I'm sorry, Dad. I outrank you. <laughs> oh, my manners. Elle, I want you to meet my family. Ah, and such a delightful family you have. You know, in my country, we have a name for families such as this. Oh, what is that? Familia. I see. <laughs> Mrs. T. Oh, hello, Saunders. I'm very pleased you have returned. Thank you. Thank you. I have one question, however. What? Why? <laughs> Saunders. Saunders, this is L. L. Saunders. Saunders, L. How do you do? I want you to know that we are all brothers under the skin. And you should never feel any different from anyone else in this room. Please, it's the only solace I have. Hi there. Hi there. Oh, this is my darling daughter, Eunice. Ah, Eunice. <laughs> beautiful name for a beautiful lady. You know, it is Greek and it means happy, victorious one. Oh. <laughs> But well, you know, in my country, we have a little bird that we call Pequeño Pajarito. You are that little bird. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and what does Pequeño Pajarito mean? Ah, it <laughs> means little bird. <laughs> Hi, I'm Annie. Annie, you are a flower. A flower? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Annie is my husband's girlfriend, whom he met at my daughter's wedding, and they are living in the pool house together. Your husband's girlfriend? Uh-huh. Ah, well, then I will call you La Ramera. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> What's it mean? Slut. <laughs> That's it, Zorro. <laughs> now you have done it. Now you have really done it. <laughs> Stealing a man's wife, turning his son against him. After that I could take all of that. Maybe I deserved that. But insulting the woman that I love. <laughs> man, you are in it. <laughs> now listen here, you twerp. Carlos El Puerco Valdez has never in his life insulted the dignity of a lady unless she insults herself first. Fine, I accept your apology. <laughs> oh, uh, Junis. What was all that little bird stuff about? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're so delicate, so fragile. What a load of burritos. <laughs> Here's Daddy. Uh, Daddy, say hello. Goodbye. <laughs> Daddy. Forward my mail to Churchill. I'll be staying at his place for a few years. Oh, Daddy, what is the matter? A treaty is one thing, but to live under the same roof with this fascist. <laughs> Goodbye. Daddy, Elle is not a fascist. General Lissimo Franco isn't a fascist. <laughs> Sir, you have me confused with someone else. I'll be frank, Franco. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Lunch time. Where do we pitch the tent? What the hell is this? Oh, Chester. Chester, I, I want you to meet my dear friend, Juan. Uh, this is also Juan, whom I do not know very well, but any friend of Juan's is a friend of mine. Uh, this is also Juan. Uh, Juan and Juan are cousins. However, Juan and Juan are not related at all. Uh, Juan, everybody, everybody, Juan. Hello. Uh, Juan, everybody, everybody, Juan. Uh, Juan, everybody, everybody, Juan. Jess, who are they? My band of merry men. Bon royale. <laughs> You see, Chester, they were lost at sea for days and nights, and then finally they were rescued by the Bumblebee tuna boat. Oh, it was just awful. Jess, uh, would you tell your band of merry men to bivouac somewhere else? <laughs> or what? Or they can stay here. Oh, El. <laughs> yes? El, why do they call you El Puerco? Is the pig a sacred animal in your country? Oh, well... They call me El Puerco because I like El Puerco. The pig is not sacred, but it is 6.98 a pound. Ah. El Puerco. Ah, excelente. 
Red, uh, I would love it if you and your lovely family could join me and my men for lunch. Huh? <laughs> yes, for today, El Puerco is serving... El Puerco. <laughs> we are what we eat. <laughs> General? Uh, sir, with all due respect to your daughter, um, what the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Why am I still here? Uh, El, I think maybe I should explain about Daddy. Generalissimo Franco, an ally of Germany, of Japan, of Italy. Why do I owe you a debt of gratitude? Well, it has crossed my mind. Because you have shown me that a leopard can change his spots. Major, what on earth are you Don't going? you realize what this man has done, you nitwit? He has captured Mussolini. <laughs> You didn't let me finish my knock. Sorry, finish it. That's better. Now you're sure it's me. I saw you through the peephole. Oh, that's not foolproof. One of Tibbs' guys might have put on a Danny Dallas mask. Flowers. The old ones aren't dead yet. Candy. Gives me zits. Fried wonton? Coming out of my ears. Books. Terrific. And a puzzle. I hate puzzles. Something is bothering you, right? Yeah, something is bothering me. Flowers, everyday flowers. I don't like flowers. I got sinuses. My nose is closing up. I can't breathe with flowers. I feel like I got a salami stuffed up my nostrils. And every day you give me flowers and candy and, and books and puzzles and records. Who the hell are you, Captain Kangaroo? May I tell you something? What? I'm trying to be pleasant, and frankly, you're not being a very good sport. Look, Danny, you are outside all day long. You're giving out to parking tickets. You're arresting people. I am cooped up in here like a parakeet, so don't tell me that attitude. I'm protecting you. You're driving me crazy. Someone may be trying to kill you. Well, if I don't get out of here very soon, somebody may be trying to kill you. It's my job, Gwen. And that's all it is, too. Oh, yeah? I happen to be crazy about you. Well, I don't want you to be crazy about me. I'm sorry. That's the way I feel. So don't feel, OK? Leave me alone. Why should I? Because no matter how much you say you like me, I feel double that for you. And I don't want to. Because I'm going to wind up loving you, and you're not going to wind up loving me. Is that why you've been acting so crazy? Maybe. <laughs> Listen, you, I keep you locked up in this motel room. I forbid you to see anybody, talk to anybody. I don't make love to you. I hardly even look at you. Now, how can you say I don't love you? You do? No. <laughs> well, what if I do? Is there a law against it? Um, <clears throat> well, it's just that I'm... Not exactly the kind of girl a person right away brings home to me mother, you know? Jin. Yes, you are. What? Coming home to meet my mother. Oh, whoa, uh, Denny, wait a minute. Plus which, you're moving in. You'll have people to talk to, and Tibbs will never think of looking for you there. What a great idea. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm gonna tell my mother, so don't object. Who's objecting? I'm packing. <laughs> hey, there's my room. <laughs> it's a nice room. Here's your door. Okay. And we go. Uh, That's it. Get the light. Here. Very good. Oh. Oh. Maggie, I should never have had this second helping of 
Guacamole. You never should have had that fifth of tequila. Uh, yeah. Okay, here you go. Uh, Lay down. Okay. Let's uh, move over a little bit. All right. <laughs> Maggie, somebody stole the bed. <laughs> Just hold on a second. Here I come. Okay. Now, Jody. <laughs> You know, you're not going to find Wendy in a bottle. Yeah. Well, we're not going to find Wendy, period. <laughs> Come on, now, don't talk like okay. that. We are right on Carol's oh. trail. You heard what the fire eater said. She left for Alaska two days ago. Yeah. But where in Alaska? Juno. No, I don't know. We don't even have a phone. <laughs> Juno. Well, if I knew, I must have forgot. <laughs> You're drunk, Jody. You really think so? <laughs> yes, I do. Come on, come on, now. You need your rest. We'll get an early start tomorrow. That's it. Put your things in there. There you go. No, 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 wait, wait. Come on. Come on with me now. That's it. Okay. Stay. Okay? Right. Now you go to sleep. All right. Get a good night's sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Okay. <sighs> Where are you going? To my room. You want me to walk you? <laughs> Good night, Jody. Maggie, don't go. I, I want to talk to you. <sighs> You're in no condition to talk, Jody. You get some sleep. We'll talk in the morning, okay? Oh, Maggie, I'll be sober in the morning, and I won't be able to say to you what I want to say to you if I'm not drunk. Okay. What is it, Jody? I don't know if I can tell you while I'm drunk. <laughs> tell me. I like you. I like you too, Jody. No, Maggie. I mean, I like you, like you. <laughs> I get the picture. And, and, and don't you think that's a little strange coming from me? I mean, I'm a cupcake. <laughs> Last time I felt this way about somebody, they had a beard. Well, Jody, we have been spending an awful lot of time together lately, and we have become very close. And you've had a little bit too much to drink tonight, so um, I think it's natural that you would feel this way. Actually. No, Maggie. I like you because you're a woman. That's what's so crazy. You've got me thinking things I never thought I'd think about a woman. Maggie, what did I just say? You said you like me because I'm a woman. That's what I thought I said. Well, I might as well admit it. I've been attracted to you, too. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I couldn't have you. I'm very good at that, falling for impossible men. You give me a married gay man who lives in China. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> well, forget it. I don't fool around with clients. And I don't fool around with women. Hello, sir. It's nice to see you again. Hello, Ben. How are you? Uh, Bert, sir. It's, it's Bert. What's Bert? My name. Of course it is. How are you? I'm fine, sir. I'm just... I'm, I'm just fine. Uh, thank you very much for making time to see me. I, it's been so long since I've been in church that when I needed to talk, I ran right back to my old boyhood pastor. And who is that? Uh, you, sir. Yes. <laughs> well, I see that you've been promoted. It's, uh, Bishop. Yes. 
What's troubling you? Uh, well, sir, I... I think I'm having a crisis of faith. Now, I know I haven't been to church in a long time, but that doesn't mean I haven't been a religious man. I have been. I truly have been. But lately, I've been having a lot of trouble believing, sir. In what? Uh, in God. Of course. Now, sir, I, you know, I really don't like to question. It's just that I'm having just a lot of trouble understanding. If, if you, you know what I mean? I wanted to do good. I wanted to help my fellow man, so I ran for sheriff. And now that I'm sheriff, <clears throat> instead of him helping me, he seems to be making things really very, very difficult. Like I tried to clean up this town, and what happens? It winds up, I get blackmailed. People calling me on the phone saying terrible things to me and my family. I hardly ever see my wife and baby anymore. I mean, the, where's the sense in that, sir? I mean, where's the logic? This all may turn out to be what I call an Alvin. <laughs> it's named after Harry Alvin. I know you don't know who he is. I don't know who he is either. It's... <laughs> Harry Alvin's some guy. I just read about in a newspaper. It's like 40 years old, and then the last year, had two heart attacks. Kidney failure, cerebral hemorrhage, triple bypasses, and survives. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he was riding his bike in the park. Two guys jumped him, murdered him, and took his bike. I mean, you know, I mean, Harry Alvin went through a whole year of hell and winds up getting shot for a Schwinn. Where is the sense in that? Where is the logic? <sighs> That's what I call an Alvin. And who oh knows, this may turn out to be an Alvin too. I don't know. What I'm saying here is that it's his Alvins that I don't understand. It's his Alvins that don't make sense, and I make me lose faith. And that's why I came here today, it's all right. That's it. Sir. Is this your answer? Now that El Preco and his three wands will be living in the Tate house, will Chester learn how to tango? Since Jody and Maggie have admitted that their business relationship may be more than just business, will it hurt their relationship? Now that Danny suggested Gwen live with the Campbells, will the shadow know? Now that Bert has bored the bishop to death, will he go to confession? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of Soap.